Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Rundown. My name is Sunny Galt. I'm a messenger with United Network News, which is what UNN stands for, United Network News. We are the official news channel for CARE, and that stands for the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. And we talk about the real news. So what's really happening on our planet in our communities, throughout the multiverse, we cover it all. And we have a newscast that's released through our online distribution platform, which is our website at unitednetwork.earth. Our newscast comes out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I encourage you guys to check that out. If you're not a member, because most of our content is behind a paywall, we also have our YouTube channel and our newscast come out on our YouTube channel a week later. So after it airs on the app, a week after that time is when it comes out. We post them on YouTube and Rumble. So if you aren't yet a member on our app, you can certainly check out our content that way. This podcast is a week in review. So I know everybody's got crazy busy schedules. And so I like to take a look at the three newscasts that we just wrapped up the week with and focus on the stories that we covered, some of the big stories. And this is a great way to catch up on anything you may have missed. Maybe you missed one of the newscasts. And you're like, ah, what did they talk about? This is a great way to get caught up on all that. We have highlights from the stories that we cover on the newscast. That includes our local stories from our field messengers. We've got stories about the new earth and where we're going, where our planet is going, and our amazing superhuman abilities that we are now uh, remembering right? We have regional stories and we have what's called our World Situation Report with Kimberly Gogan. That takes place at the end of each newscast. And the reason we're able to get this information, if you guys are wondering, is because we have the highest security clearance on the planet. It's actually from Kim. Kim has the highest security clearance. And because she knows everything that's going on through the alpha system, which we are going to talk a little bit more about today, She passes that information along to us, and then you guys have the latest and greatest information that you are not going to get anywhere else. Now, I will say, some of the information that we share is probably going to be surprising to a lot of people. And it is unique information, again, that is not, you know, talked about in mainstream media. It's not even talked about really in the alternative media, because the alternative media is also controlled, just like mainstream is. But I encourage you guys to stick with us. Even if stuff seems a little bit out there, stick with us. It's a good idea to maybe take some notes. (laughs) And above all, be sure to think critically. Ask questions. Don't just take our word for it. Look up some of the stuff that we're talking about. Put the puzzle pieces together for yourself. Okay, so before we dive into last week's stories, I do have some quick announcements. First of all, this is our 50th podcast episode. Now, we did change format right around the beginning of the year, and now we're releasing podcast episodes only one a week. Before, I was doing them after each newscast, and it was getting a little crazy, (laughs) a little busy for my taste. So now we're doing one a week, and now we're at episode 50. So yay us, little milestones, I tell you, I love it. The other thing I want to let you know is if you hear some additional noise in the background this week, this is my son's, not today, but in a few days, it's my son's 12th birthday. And I'm recording this on a Saturday. And all he wanted for his birthday is to have four of his closest friends over. So now I have got four plus him, plus my older son, plus my twin girls, plus a crazy dog that isn't used to all of this noise. All of that is going on in my house right now. So I kind of shut the door to my studio. But if you hear a lot of noises, that's because I have an insane amount of children in my house right now. So I'm going to apologize in advance. But that's just kind of how it is. (laughs) So welcome to my world. Okay, today is April 20th, 2024. Here's the rundown of stories you may have missed this week on UNN. Okay, our newscasts always start off with our amazing field messenger reports. And really, this is the heart and soul of what UNN is all about. We believe there will come a day in the very near future where that is pretty much the newscast, is you guys reporting on what's happening 
in your area of the world. It's a beautiful way to get the truth of what's happening. So it's not filtered through some, you know, national news service or something like that. But it's not just major news stories. It's really about us getting to know one another as people again, right? So some of the stories are just about community events and things that are going on or natural things that you're noticing in your everyday life. And all of it is beautiful. So we usually have between two and three field messenger reports as part. Oh, there's my dog. (laughs) Hi, Sadie. Sadie wants to join us today. We usually have two to three field messenger reports as part of each of our newscasts. So on Monday, we had a couple of stories. The first one's from Kim from Oregon. She was actually reporting from Hawaii. So I don't know if Kim was uh, able to take a really fun vacation, (laughs) but she did a story on a place called the Habilitat Center in Hawaii. It offers a long-term approach to addiction, which primarily, you know, for them means drugs and alcohol. That's what their center focuses on. And we had a chance to hear from the executive director. Now, he has a very interesting story himself. He was in prison before. He was homeless. He was also addicted to drugs. And now he runs the largest center, rehabilitation center in Hawaii. And he says the whole reason for all of this is to teach people how to thrive in life and become masters of self. And it's real inspiring because he chooses to do all of this without the use of big pharma as well. So these people stay there. They interact with each other, really form a community, if you will. And so it's a very beautiful story. Be sure to check it out. And then our second story on Monday is with our Nightway Jacqueline, and she's from Uganda. And she tells us about the registration for cooperatives in Uganda is now going digital. And this is a very big deal. So cooperatives are people in the same, like involved in the same economic activity coming together to increase production and profits. You could kind of think of it as like a business group. You know, you do similar things. You come together in order to grow your businesses. Well, if someone wanted to join a cooperative in the past, everything had to be done at this one place. And it wasn't very easy to get to depending on where you lived in Uganda. So now they're simplifying this whole process so people can join these cooperatives and the local economy can thrive, right? They're really about helping people be able to do this and make their own money. In fact, there are more than 49,000 cooperatives in Uganda. So this really is a way of life and it really can help a lot of people. Then on Wednesday, our stories, we start with Helen, who's in Australia, and Helen reports on there being more natural weather in the sky. So sometimes we talk about chemtrails and chemicals in the sky. Well, that impacts everything. And so one of the things that she's noticed where she lives in Australia is the nature, the the, um, weather is more natural. And things are able to thrive as a result. And so she shows us her tomatoes that are now growing and thriving. She says the bees are more active and producing a lot more honey. Her sunflowers are opening. Pumpkins are growing. So she's seeing all this beauty around her. And she was really documenting, she said, the skies to see if there was a direct correlation. And definitely was. Then in North Carolina, we have Godfrey. So North Carolina is in the United States, and he reports on a local issue that's happening right now in his area. There was a landslide that occurred a couple weeks ago from when, when he recorded you know, this report, and he said there is a tree that is now blocking the road. And the government says it's going to take two months to fix this. It's not just the tree. He shows us the different damage that was caused as a result of the landslide. And yeah, there might be some integrity issues with the road, but this is a very well-traveled road to get to town. And it cuts out a lot of travel if you can take this one route. And now it is closed down and the citizens aren't too happy about it. 
Then on Friday, we have a couple of stories. So Emma is in Spain. Emma's been reporting a lot lately. It's awesome. She does the story from the Canary Islands, and it's all about Carnival. So her area specifically is Fuerteventura, and they are celebrating Carnival. There's a lot going on. She shows us uh, the, the vibrant festival they've been having. It's geared towards the whole family. They decorate floats for the parade. People dress up. There's a lot of music, a lot of food and drink, and people are just having a really good time. And then finally, we have a report from Kimberly and Todd, and they are out of the United States and North Carolina. Well, that's our second North Carolina story this week. That's rare. And they are showing us, so they were in the path of totality for the eclipse. And they basically just took video and showed us exactly what happened in their area. So they started before the eclipse and, you know, we got to see as it started to get darker and darker and they just kind of shared with us their feelings about all of it. So very unique. And it was great to be able to see it. I was not in the path of totality. (laughs) So it barely got dark where I was. So thank you, Kimberly and Todd, for sharing your experience with us. Let's talk about what's happening in the new earth. So these are stories that are meant to inspire you guys because we talk about all the time how our planet is changing, how humanity is changing. So we want to encourage you guys on this journey that we're all on. So we talk to people, we interview people, and then we also have general stories about what's happening and you know, what people are doing on this planet to make it a better place because we're all about restoration. So let's first talk about some of the interviews that we had. On Monday, we had Lindsay Andriotti on the show. I like to call Lindsay our kindness queen. She has her own company, but she is all about raising awareness around kindness. And she calls herself a chief imaginal. So if we think of imaginals as people that use their imagination, they're very creative. And she likes to encourage people to use that. At the same time, again, just talking about kindness. So this particular interview was about how to be kind to yourself emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. So that's really important because I think we forget to be kind to ourselves. We think of being kind to other people But how are we actually treating ourselves? And one of the things that Lindsay brings up is we all need that go-to thing to be kind to ourselves. So if we want to treat ourselves or, you know, just to feel good about ourselves, in other words, be kind to ourselves, what's one thing? If you can think about something that you do in your own life or maybe nothing's going to come to mind. Maybe you need to create something or, you know, have something that you can turn to on those days where you're like, you know what? I just need a little kindness, so I'm going to be kind to myself by doing X, Y, Z. So think about that. A little bit of a homework assignment for you guys. (laughs) And then on Wednesday, we had Belinda Tung on the show. This is the first time she's been on our news. I've been talking to Belinda for weeks. She is the founder of a website called perfectchild.org. So this first interview that I had with Belinda was talking about what Perfect Child is and why it's so important. Why did she create this? Because one of the things that Belinda does, she has a child of her own, and she noticed changes happening in her child. And her child is special. All children being born are extremely special right now. And we talk about this a lot on the New Earth portion of the news. But Belinda took it another step. She wanted to create a resource where she could talk to people and do these interviews to really shed light on our children and, you know, how we can encourage them during this time. And all of that is wrapped up in something called Perfect Child. So if you want to learn more about that, check out that interview. You can also go to her website at perfectchild.org. And then on Friday, we had Veda Austin back. We had done one other interview with Veda, and we brought her back, and she is a water researcher. And in the first segment we did, which was like three to four weeks ago, we talked about a little bit about her research, but also how she got into it. So Veda does these experiments and she does them in Petri dishes. And she explains her whole process of how she does her water experiments. So her whole thing is getting a Petri dish, filling it with water. Now I'm oversimplifying. She goes into much greater detail on exactly what she does. But if you put an image underneath the Petri dish, 
this is all about water consciousness. So the consciousness of the water will actually create the image in the ice as it starts to freeze, which is fascinating. I love this topic. And she has all these pictures that she's taken. And again, she goes through the whole process of what she does because we can do this too. In fact, literally today, guys, earlier today, I ordered some glass Petri dishes because it's important that it's glass. And I'm waiting for them to come in the mail. Hopefully, they'll come in the next couple of days. And then I'm going to start to do these experiments with my kids because I find this absolutely fascinating. Now, I did just release this segment on our YouTube channel. I just released it on Friday. What I've been doing is picking one of the interviews one of the New Earth interviews each week, and I post one of those on YouTube at the end of the week. And so this one for this week was with Veda, because I thought a lot of you may want to not only see this interview, but even share it with other people. So if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll find this interview right now. Okay, let's talk about some of the more interesting stories we had on the news this week, and New Earth, of course. We talked about healing cat purrs. So if you think about it, a cat purr is really a vibration. It is a frequency, which we talk a lot about, right? Everything is frequency on our planet. And so these vibrations from the cat purrs have been scientifically linked to healing infections, reducing inflammation, lowering our stress, our anxiety, It can even help reduce pain and reduce heart attacks. How incredible is this? We thought our our cats were just really cute. And yeah, we like it when they purr because we know they're happy. But there is a medicinal side to it as well, not just for the cat, but for the human companion as well. So I think that's just so beautiful. We also had a story on the benefits of handwriting, which we don't get a lot of. I mean, like maybe when you're in school, but once you get to be like an adult, we don't even like handwrite checks anymore. (laughs) I hardly ever handwrite anything. And when I do, I'm like, oh gosh, my handwriting is so bad. So there was a study in Norway that shows neurological benefits of handwriting compared to typing. Typing. Yeah. I was going to say typewriting. Like, that doesn't make sense compared to typing. And what they did is they measured brainwave data in two different groups of people. People as they wrote. So, you know, just, you know, handwriting something like on a note or a piece of paper and then typing on a screen. And what they found is the neural networks in the brain showed more connectivity between the different regions of the brain in the handwriting group. And it also played a vital role, they believe, in memory building and information encoding. They say it improves spelling accuracy, especially for people who are dealing with dyslexia, which makes sense, right? Like, I mean, I type all day long because I'm usually on a computer, but there's more of a connection, I feel like. When I actually get a piece of paper, you know, it's something about the paper in your hand and it just feels different, right? So I'm not surprised by this study. And our final story is part of the new earth. It's about what is in soil. And I've been thinking about this a lot ever since we ran this story because I actually needed to do some gardening. And my first my first thought is to put on those gardening gloves because I'm like, oh, I don't know what's in the soil. Oh, my gosh, I might touch a bug. But it's so good for you. It's like grounding for your hands, right? <laughs> and so this story is about, well, what is actually in that soil that you're touching? And what we found is that it is a living, breathing ecosystem. It has weathered rock particles. It has organic matter. It is crucial for water retention, this organic matter. That's crucial for water retention. It helps encourage plant growth and minimize erosion. It plays a vital role in sustaining food, so the food that we grow, sustaining forests, flowers, and also all those little animals that live in the ground. And this was fascinating. It says one small spoonful of soil is bound to have 10,000 species and a billion living microscopic cells. So a lot more than just dirt, right? Soil is, there's a lot in soil. And maybe we should get our hands dirty more often. Now here is a look at some of our regional stories. 
And we cover a lot of these stories on the news. I've got three different topics that I was able to group most of our content in over the last week. So we're going to talk about some weather stories. There's a lot of that happening affecting large parts of the world. We're going to talk about some healthcare stories and then housing. So those are our categories this week. Let's start with weather. So in the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, there has been record rainfall and it has caused some severe flooding. It is overwhelming the draining systems. It's causing a lot of issues in neighborhoods and business districts. Major highways are affected. In fact, they said heavy rainfall has exceeded the annual average in just 24 hours. Now, a little bit later on, on one of the newscasts, I can't remember which one it was this past week, Kim explains a little bit more behind that. Now, we have talked about this as a while ago, but we talked about streams of water coming to the surface in areas that have not seen water in a long time. So desert areas now teeming with life. And I know you're not hearing this a lot on the news now, but we are starting to hear about this in places that previously nothing would grow. Now you've got grass, you've got animals that are able to eat the grass in these areas. So it is changing our planet in a major way. And this is all part of the revitalization of planet Earth. And so what's happening in the UAE right now, I know it's not good for flooding purposes because we're not used to that. The people over there aren't used to having that much rain. But if we're going to have our planet flourish again, we are going to have to change some of these things because that area, you know, is never supposed to be desert, Everything is supposed to be lush and beautiful, and we're supposed to be able to work the land and grow things on the land. And so while that story seems like something that's bad, long term, no, that's actually a good story. We just have to rework how things are structured in that area so that people aren't getting hurt and you know people can still function. Obviously, that's really important. Okay, next weather story is about a volcano eruption in Indonesia. In North Sulawesi, Indonesia, hundreds of people were evacuated after the eruption of the Ruang volcano. It projected ash, lava, rocks, miles into the air. And it also prompted the area to put on its highest alert level. People also reported, this is interesting, purple lightning flashes in the sky. It's estimated that 800 residents were directly impacted with a potential 1,200 more people to be impacted, you know, depending on what happens in the aftermath here. And in the capital, the airport closed. Also, there were flights from East Malaysia and Brunei. Those were also canceled. So a lot of people impacted over there. In Ecuador, Ecuador is having to ration electricity now. And the reason it's a weather story is because this was brought on by a major, major drought. And it is forcing the government to start rationing electricity in major cities. They say the lower amounts of rainfall have depleted their reservoirs and That, in turn, has reduced the output from the hydroelectric plants, which typically provide three-fourths of the power to residents in the area. So if they don't have that, that's a big problem. They say power outages could be three hours at a time. Obviously, that's going to impact people and their day-to-day lives, perhaps their businesses as well. The government is planning to subsidize April's electricity bills. All right, moving on from weather to health care. We've got four stories here. Most of these are in the U.S. unintentionally. So in the U.S., we have seen, because I'm in the U.S., drug shortages have risen to an unprecedented level, impacting hundreds of medications. And they say this is due to rising tensions between the U.S. and China. I don't know if you know this, but China currently makes 76% of all pharmaceutical drugs worldwide. So if you don't have access to those drugs anymore, that's a really big deal. 
And this crisis, they say, spans on multiple drug classes, but it is impacting what they're calling sterile injectables, which are crucial for chemotherapy. That's kind of the big thing. They say there's also a shortage with ADHD drugs as well. All right, let's talk about who owns these healthcare groups because that's a concern right now, too. There are growing concerns over the corporatization of healthcare services, like, in other words, healthcare businesses or teams merging and that impact on patient care. They say there have been many complaints about reduced personal care in some networks post-acquisition, and patients are getting shorter visits as well. So now the government is starting to monitor this a little bit more because they don't think that's a good thing. Now let's talk about the Food and Drug Administration. This is interesting too. So You've heard of people being in like test groups for cancer drugs, you know, these different trials and things like that. Well, the FDA has what they call a fast track approval program for cancer drugs. And that basically gets these trial drugs out there to the public. If you're part of these, I'll just call them experiments because I feel like that's what they are. If you're part of these experimental groups and What they're not doing is once it's out there, they are not doing further research or, you know, getting further information from the people that are giving the drugs about the effectiveness of the drugs post-approval. So it's like, hurry, 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 get it out there. But then we don't hear anything past that. And what they found is that many drugs approved between the years 2013 and 2017 did not show significant benefits in later trials. Now, we're not really sure why. You know, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure the powers that be don't want that information out there. But that's pretty telling. Now let's talk about the EU. So activists are pushing for a ban on forced sterilization involving EU states. Now, this sterilization primarily impacting women and girls with disabilities, that is still permissible in 12 of the 27 EU member states. And so there is a group of activists that are trying to change this. This procedure, this sterilization procedure, is often done without consent of the person that's impacted by it, right? The person it's happening to. Or it's under extreme pressure from guardians. And usually the guardians, you know, they're thinking they're doing the best thing for the patient. But is it really the best thing, right? So now these activists are trying to change these laws across the EU, All right, our third category is housing. We've got four stories here. The first one comes out of Germany. This is an update on their housing crisis. They say it is escalating. It is impacting people of all social classes. Homelessness has skyrocketed. They estimate that about 3,500 people in the Bonn region are impacted by this. That is a tenfold increase from previous years. Federal government, the federal government's decision to sell thousands of apartments to private investors, as well as cutbacks in social housing constructions, are being blamed. Okay, so they say that's the reason that this is happening. Surprise, surprise, it's the government. Hmm. All right, in Vietnam, they have what's called micro apartments. And this story specifically involves the capital. They have found that residents in these micro apartments, so these really tiny apartments, are facing safety risks from overcrowding and poor fire safety. They're dealing with cramped spaces, blocked exits, and inadequate fire protection. They say the fire trucks can't even fit in the alleyways. And we have some really good visuals of this that we show on the news because sometimes it's hard for us to picture this, you know, kind of in the on the western side of the world. But these are really small places. And they say the landlords are ignoring building codes. A lot of times they are adding illegal extensions just to make it a little bit bigger. But, you know, you take space away from here, you know, and add it here. 
that's going to cause problems. It's probably why the fire trucks can't get through. And authorities say this is this is what they want to do. They want to grant these apartments legal status by 2025 because if that happens, then they can make regulations around this and control it because that's what the government's really good at, controlling things, allegedly to improve conditions. All right, let's talk about what's happening in Paris, France, because we've got the Summer Olympics that are coming up in Paris, and we've had a lot of news come out of Paris as a result. This is not so good news. Uh, It doesn't look too good for the people of Paris, uh, for the authorities, I should say, in Paris. They have evacuated a large migrant camp. And it's often referred to as France's largest migrant camp. It is in a suburb of Paris. And the reason they're doing this is because the 2024 Summer Olympics is almost here. And they're trying to clean things up as much as possible. So this particular camp housed 450 migrants, including young men. Also, we had some mothers with children in this group. Many of these people, they have legal documents They are just awaiting social housing assignments, and they're temporarily in these camps. Now they are dispersed, and a lot of people have concerns about this, right? How are the migrants going to get stable housing now? What is the impact on children? What about their education? And all of that good stuff. And our final story is about what's happening in England for renters in England. They are losing more than half a billion pounds annually due to unwanted home moves. And this is often initiated by landlords through what they call no-fault evictions. So it's not the fault of the tenant. There's some other reason. Or rent hikes. And they estimate that this has forced 830,000 tenants to move just within the past year. And they say this is resulting in a never-ending cycle of displacement because you have all the fees that are associated with that. If you guys have ever moved, you know, there's like all these hidden costs. You know, we think about moving expenses like, oh, I got to rent a truck or I got to get some boxes or whatever. But there's removal services. So if you've got to, you know, remove things physically from a home, it's too big or whatever. There's storage services. So if you don't have another place to live, and maybe you're in a hotel or something like that, all of that is an issue. Even the rent, you know, having to pay, Uh, Usually it's like first and last month's rent, at least here in the U.S. All of that adds up. All right, now we've got some highlights from the World Situation Report with Kimberly Gogan. And we touch on a story, well, actually Kim talks about it quite a bit, that we talked about in regional news, not on this podcast, uh, but on the actual newscast. And that is a story that probably everybody has heard about. And that is Iran sending drones and missiles over to Israel. And obviously, tensions are high over there. We've had a lot of coverage, mainstream media, I'm sure alternative media as well is all over this. So I wanted to get Kim's perspective on what actually is happening with this and who are actually the players that are involved and what's actually going on here. So we found out that the secret space program people, (laughs) SSP people, and Langley Five, as well as people from the global headquarters, those people are primarily heading this up. I know the headlines say, oh, you know, Iran is doing this to Israel, blah, 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 blah. It's not really, it's a lot of U.S. people are involved in there too. Kim says these people are trained under Cheney and Bush when they were in control. And they're really responsible for all the stuff that's happening over there between Iran and Israel. And Kim calls this war by the book. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking about that. What exactly is war by the book? According to Kim, these are cookie cutter wars. So if someone is going to start a quote unquote war, it is not a real war. Are real people dying depending on the war? Yes, of course. Real people died in World War I and World War II. These are still cookie cutter wars from the standpoint of things were predetermined. And the reason you go to war is never what they tell the public. Never. (laughs) So these are, you could call these manufactured wars. So yes, real people are impacted. Yes, real families are sending real loved ones overseas. All of that is real. 
Uh, a lot of times there is complete devastation to these areas. So we're not saying that that part isn't real. We're talking about the intention behind it. And also, if you really look and if you really had the, the background information of what was going on, you would see that these all follow recipes. There is and are specific ways to start wars. And there is a manual, essentially, that has this information in it. (laughs) So the first soundbite that I want to play is Kim talking about war by the book and how she could tell by the way things were unfolding who was responsible. Let's talk about war by the book. Okay. War by the book means these are the ways you create wars. You do this, you do this, you do that, and then, you know, this happens. So it's kind of like working at McDonald's where you have one almost meat-looking like substance, (laughs) right? One patty of that, whatever that is. You have one tablespoon of onions, three pickles, one teaspoon of mustard, one teaspoon of ketchup, and then the bun. Yeah. Well, war is done the exact same way. I mean, if you get a McDonald's hamburger in South Africa, it's the same thing as getting a McDonald's hamburger in the United States or Canada. It's the same, same, same everywhere. And it's done that way on purpose. Now, war is also done this way on purpose. Because remember, no war is actually real. Mm -hmm. That is very important to understand. No war is actually real. This is all orchestrated. So they need to know where everybody is going to go all the time, which is why you are not permitted to start a war that is not by the book. Right. Now, you have a few different scenarios to choose from. It's kind of like, oh, how do I say? uh, You know how like when you go to a spa, It's been years since I've gone to a spa, but you go to a spa and you can pick between like the day packages, you know, you could get a massage and a facial or whatever it is you're going to do there. And it comes in these neat little packages. So you have war package number one, package number two, package number three and four. But at the end of each one, the bun is separate. So you have to get the bun separate of the rest of your meat byproduct package and your pickles and your onions. But you can choose onions, no onions, ketchup, no ketchup. You know, maybe maybe you want to add some cheese on there and have a cheeseburger war, you know, or something like that. But this is the best. I know it's funny, but this is the best way I can explain it to you. So you understand, you know, maybe you've got two beef byproduct patties. And some special sauce in this one. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's, it's one of the following things. And anybody watching this war, even from any other country, also has the same war book. Yeah. So the U.S. has the same playbook as Russia has, as China has, as the U.K. has, as Iraq has, as Iran has, they all, as Israel has. They have the same book. So then they know where to go. So then all these exchanges that we're seeing now play out in the media, like Biden, you know, saying don't respond, you know, telling Israel don't respond, all of that. That's just for us. That's the theater. That's the production. Right. But everyone knows where this is going to go. That's right. So everybody already knows this is going to happen. Now, today they're announcing that Israel is going to fire back at Iran. Mm -hmm. Um, Here's what I have heard. Well, Let me finish this up. So, okay, so we all know wars are cookie cutters. There's only like five different spa packages you get in war. You know, you can only pick through these specific items offered by the the lords of war. Mm -hmm. So one of those was selected over the weekend. Well, I would say it started probably mid last week because my intel from the ground tells me that they have also murdered a Christian leader in Lebanon. Uh, This has all happened in the last seven days. And deposited that dead person into a territory that is 100% controlled by the Hezbollah in Lebanon. So it's then they report that this person is dead, found in this territory. So then who would... 
who else could have possibly killed this Christian leader in Lebanon but the Hezbollah? So they're planting evidence. Well, it's the same. See, and this is why it's so easy to see. Once you have a copy of the war book, then you understand, oh, this is the American operatives. Oh, here they are. I don't know. They might even be from Alabama. I'm not sure, you know, and they could be SSP people also because when you don't have a passport to plant somewhere mm -hmm. in a in a large disaster cuz you're kind of all broke so then you you kill one guy and deposit him in a region just like you did the passport during 911 mm -hmm. and then attempted to do near the bridge in Canada not that long ago we know it's the same people don't we we can put two and two together in every area. Now, this has not hit American news. The only thing that hit American news, as far as I understand, and probably what you call worldwide fake news, is we are seeing the bombing happen from Iran. Yeah. Now, if you have been questioning things and awakening for a long period of time, you'll remember Netanyahu over a decade ago standing, or close to a decade ago, standing at a UN General Assembly meeting with a giant hand-drawn cartoon bomb and the name, he had a cue card that said this, and he held it up during his his speech talking about how Iran was going to bomb Israel. So they have been talking about this for a very long time. Mm. Now, this all was orchestrated prior to the fact that they did not get paid. So this was all set up. It's been, it's been brewing now for over a week. The Lords of War, so to speak, have chosen spa package number three on the list of items. And then here come the pickles. Here come the, you know, and you've got the Christian leader in Lebanon. You have another other, you have other situations going on with the PMF in Iraq uh, as well. Uh, allegedly, uh, there are several Hamas leaders that died that didn't actually die. Uh, that is also in Middle Eastern news. So there's a lot of, been, there's a lot of what I call setups here. Mm -hmm you know, to, that led to this escalation um, that we saw on Friday. So the Lords of War, these are Americans trained under Cheney and Bush, absolutely 100%, because you know the massage therapist that just <laughs> pushes, pushes you to the limit when you order that spa package. You know, that was like less relaxing to be there than it would be to go, right? So, yeah. or, you know, you get the one that, so you can kind of tell who trained under who, mm -hmm. you know, maybe at this favorite sp place you've been going for a long period of time uh, by their technique, yeah. let's just say, since we're talking war packages here. So the technique absolutely came from some Americans, uh, Clear as day, know exactly who it was. But what happened was to them is that by Friday evening and into Saturday morning, it was the pickle. They delivered the pickles, the mustard, the ketchup, the um, the onions, and the meat byproduct. But no bun came. Mm -hmm. Bun in this case is where's the money? <laughs> Yeah. Because you set up the war and the money would come out. They would then, it's like, so what they thought, this is what it appears to me from an SSP or secret space program operative level. What I see is them believing that there is still an automatic call payment. For those of you that don't know, a call payment is when you sign up for automatic payments for, for example, your electric bill, and then it automatically is called out of your account on the day that you set up. You don't have to do anything. That's like a call payment. So they think they can do the same thing still with the alpha system. They can start a war, and then the buns will come out whether I like it or not. Yeah. Now that 
only works under old programming of the alpha system. Now, I've been reprogramming the alpha system to be in line with what humanity wants for a long time. I mean, I my first time really getting into it at all by myself was probably the end of 2015. So it's been about nine years of learning how to prog program a quantum system with zero <laughs> computer experience <laughs> in programming. Absolutely zero. I might have programmed a few websites or something. So this has all been a learning process for me. Let's also talk about the cartels a little bit more. We brought this up on our last podcast episode because we talked about it on last week's news. And that is the possibility of humanity working with the cartels to help restore our planet. Now, I know that sounds a little strange because when we think of cartels, we think of people that are doing pretty bad things. But... Are they doing bad things because they're trying to call in aliens and uh, demons? No, they're doing bad things because that's how they make money. But if they had an opportunity to make money helping with the restoration of our planet, would they do so? When we're kind of in this holding period right now where we're trying to figure out if we could partner with the cartels to remove drugs off this planet, to stop human trafficking, to stop some of these really horrible things that are hurting humanity. So the cartels met last Saturday. And Kim was in on this call, meaning she could hear it. She wasn't actually part of the meeting. But this was them learning about what Kim slash humanity really wants. Like, can we partner with humanity? What does that look like? And according to Kim, they seem to be okay with things like giving us, you know, allowing us to have access to new technology and, you know, protecting humanity, protecting our planet, protecting the people that are going to create new and amazing things on this planet as opposed to, you know, harming them and uh, stealing their information, right, which is what's been done in the past. So they think Kim is reasonable with her requests, which suggests that perhaps something can happen. And that's how we wrap things up with Monday's report. Now, let's go right to Wednesday. Now, I don't have a sound bite for Wednesday. I want to give you some quick updates, and then we're going to go to Friday because we talked about a lot more stuff on Friday. On Wednesday, this is kind of the Cliff Notes version, guys. <laughs> so the SSP, General Headquarters, Langley 5, all those people that want to rule humanity and or kill us or whatever they want to do and rule the planet, they are also trying to work with the cartel as well. And what they have asked is for 48 hours. Now, this actually started, I believe, on Monday. So they asked the cartel for 48 hours starting Monday – which would end Wednesday at sundown, which is why we were talking about this on Wednesday's newscast. And they basically wanted 48 hours to see if they could turn things over and do all the things that they've been trying to do for a long time, right? So retain access or, or get access back to the financial system and all the other control systems that they had. And as part of this, they asked the cartels to turn over all of their resources to them, their tools and things like that, because, quite frankly, Kim has taken away most of their toys. All right? So they asked the cartels to do that. And the whole idea behind this is if after 48 hours, the SSP, G, you know, GHQ, uh, Langley Five, that whole group, if they are unable to achieve what they claim that they're going to achieve, then they then <laughs> they then start essentially working for the cartels. So it is a complete role reversal, whereas the cartels used to fall under, you know, those people. Now you're talking about the cartels taking a leadership role. And all of those other groups falling under them. Now, would that actually happen? Because as we talked about this on the news. Those groups, the true deep state, they lie like a rug. <laughs> they never tell the truth. 
And I'm sure the cartels know this. Okay, so would they actually fall in line under the cartels? I have my doubts on that. But there are a lot of people that are part of the cartels. They don't mess around. And so if you're going to go against them, it's basically a death wish. So this is kind of a little standoff that's going on right now. And again, we were talking about this on Wednesday, that 48 hours that they asked for was to expire at sundown. Okay. The other things that we talked about on Wednesday were some growing media fears. So things that you might be hearing in the alternative media about the government possibly, and I believe we're talking about the U.S. government here, freezing bank accounts, not allowing for withdrawals due to low amounts of money being in circulation or whatever excuse they want to give. And they basically just want to cause mass hysteria. Don't believe it. They do not have access to the things that they would need access to in order to be able to do this. Maybe they thought that they would get some extra stuff from the cartels that would help them accomplish this. We don't know, but we know that they can't do this. So if you see anything out there about that, do not worry about that. They cannot take your money. We also briefly talked about Israel and Iran. Nothing has happened, and the reason nothing has really happened, although Israel claims that they're going to you know, fire back at Iran, all this is just kind of speculation at this point. And the behind-the-scenes info on that is because of what's happening between the SSP and the cartels. So I'm grouping, I'm grouping <laughs> GHQ and Langley 5 under the SSP. So what's happening between that true deep state and the cartels? So their downlines basically aren't moving. They're not giving orders. They're not moving forward with the war at this point because, well, it's not quite a war, but there's this exchange back and forth between Israel and Iran because of this 48-hour agreement. Okay, so that's what we talked about on Wednesday, and Kim goes into a lot more information about all of that, but that's the gist. Now let's talk about Friday. On Wednesday night, there was a conference call between the SSP group and the cartels, because again, it was supposed to, you know, they had 48 hours. It was supposed to end at sundown on Wednesday. So then Wednesday night, they had a conference call. And the SSP group said they were making progress. They just needed a couple more days. Everything's going to return to normal. We're going to have all the money we want. And Kim says the cartels were just very, very quiet in this meeting, which would probably concern me. <laughs> I was having a meeting with cartels and they were very quiet. Apparently, this is how they operate. It's a poker face. And SSP and that group kind of thought that meant, oh, we're going to have some extra time. And uh, that's really not happening. Before we get into that, though, let's talk a little bit about why The SSP group just said, oh, I just need a couple more days. I mean, was this them just stalling or did they think something was actually going to happen? According to Kim, something would have normally happened kind of sort of about this time. I think they're really reaching for, for, you know, anything at this point. So I want to play a soundbite of what would typically happen around this time every seven years. You guys have heard of Anu. Okay, the term Anunnaki means Anu's people, okay? The people of Anu. So Anu was the leader of the Anunnaki people. And every seven years, I believe Kim says it was usually in the spring, but during the equinox, he would come back to Earth. And by the way, this this equinox period isn't like right on the day. It includes 30 days before and 30 days after. And the 30 days after... It would actually expire this Sunday, okay? So we're technically still within that window, although not really because they would have come back and they would have done a bunch of stuff, which you're going to hear about in this soundbite that I'm about to play. So here's the thing, guys. Anu hasn't come back, Kim says, since 2016. The SSP group says 2017. So he hasn't come back in a, a long time, and he's not even in existence anymore. In any plane of existence, he's not there. So he's never coming back. <laughs> but he normally would have come back during to during this time. 
Here's a soundbite detailing what would typically happen when he came back. Is there any truth to what they were waiting for? Now, if you were reading old books of knowledge, not wisdom, there was. Mm -hmm. We had someone come to visit us every seven years, and that someone was Anu. Now, he hasn't come since the beginning of 2016, but they were expecting that this year, for some reason, their calculations and my calculations are a year off. They believed he last visited in 2017. The last time I saw an entry from this being before its disappearance from the multiverse was back in March of 2016. Mm -hmm. Now, who's right? I don't know. I can only tell you what I saw myself uh, and witnessed myself. Uh, maybe I had an impromptu visit and he was supposed to come the following year. I'm not sure. But at any rate, they were expecting him to come back for his normal once every seven year visit. And that year and that time would be now. Now, you see, when Anna would visit, he would always visit during the time of the equinox. And during the time of the equinox, it begins 30 days before the spring equinox or fall equinox, depending on which one we're in. And it continues for 30 days after. Mm -hmm. So time is officially up by Sunday, okay. the 21st, because the equinox this year was on the 20th, 31 days in March. So was there some truth to the possibility of this happening? I, if you don't know and you're only reading old texts, then, you know, yes, in your mind, yes, in their mind, yes. In my mind, I know I sat in a council meeting in 2019 where the Universal Council actually told me in July of 2019 that this guy was no longer with us mm -hmm. in any dimension, any density, any place, anywhere um, at all. But there were preparations that would normally take place expecting this being's arrival. Now, this year, they believed, and I'm just going to tell you, because what they believe becomes our, our reality. Their perception is our reality. And the things they do to us actually become our reality during these times. So over in Macau, Macau is uh, China, technically. Um, uh, there was a facility to where it would manufacture what I call meat suits. Some of you might call them clones, avatars, bodies, physical bodies that could tolerate the atmosphere on Earth, that could breathe the air that we breathe, but that would contain a soul from another location. Mm. Now, there were special meat suits, as I call them, made for the Red Queen, made for Marduk, made for Inky and Enlil, and also the Abraxas, and surprise, surprise, Antisource as well. Wow. As the six owners of Earth, as we talked about in the past, underneath the old agreements that have now expired. Mm -hmm. So they would come together every seven years, go to this location under Macau, pull out a meat suit for themselves and walk around planet Earth for a while. How long did they stay? Well, typically until the others meeting would begin, uh, which is usually sometime in June. It has nothing to do with the solstice. It just has to do with new moons and full moons prior to the harvest moon, as we talk about each year as the meetings start. Uh, Due to their arrival, they would have a meeting amongst themselves during solstice time. I'm sorry, equinox time, spring equinox to be specific. Uh, and the last time I saw Anu was in March 31st of 2016. So that's how I know that. Mm -hmm. And during this meeting, they would formulate the plan for the next seven years. And eventually instructions would trickle down 
through the ranks to the parents, the covens, the coven masters, and eventually what we have left as the deep state. So that would be your SSP, your global headquarters, black nobility. So in, and in addition to these instructions, we would also, they would also, I should say, not we, because I was never a part of them, they would also receive money to carry out these orders and instructions for the next seven years. Mm -hmm. Now, instructions can not only come from these people, they would also come from the angels and the fallen angels and all the Council of Nine and... So there was a lot of things that were set up and then it would trickle down to the humans to whatever they wanted to happen here on earth. The next thing that would normally happen during an equinox period had to do with balance during a dark age. Now this hadn't happened hmm. since the time it was agreed upon, but it's kind of like one of those things create the problem and be the solution in this case. So during the time of a dark age, we were still supposed to have certain periods of time of the year where the light was able to thrive without the interference of the dark ones, specifically on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. So that time was to start at the spring equinox or what the others here refer to as New Year's Day, and it would continue on through September. And this started about 16,000, 17,000, 16 and a half thousand years ago is when this, this was agreed upon. But measures were put in place so they could say, oh, the light didn't choose to take their spot. <laughs> you know, or, oh, I guess they don't want to do this during this time of year. So... There, but there were countermeasures that were put in place to ensure that that never happened. Placed here by Marduk, Enki, Enlil, and the Red Queen, and in agreement with Anti-Source, to ensure that basically we had no choice. Yeah. It's like saying, like throwing us, you know, with a a chain and a giant cement block into the bottom of the ocean and saying, well, they didn't breathe down there, did they? <laughs> you know, it doesn't make any sense. But yeah. nonetheless, everybody operated in, or they did, operated in the gray areas of all co covenants. You know, they would make sure they didn't go too, too far as to break them, but yet just far enough to there where they can say, oh, look at that, there's Sunny down there at the bottom of the ocean. She didn't breathe. So hop, we'll just take over from here. We'll just, yeah. I guess, run it, run it as well. No one showed up. So, Kim, what could that look like on a more practical level? Is is it allowing humans, or how how could that facilitate or happen here on Earth? Like, can I know it didn't happen. I'm just trying to wrap my head yeah. around. Well, if they were to do something, because we're still in a dark age, right? Yeah. So, what what could that have looked like for humanity if they followed uh, the rules? We would we would look at it almost as a, a ceasefire, like you would look at a ceasefire in a war. Okay. There would be less harm and manipulation uh, on humanity. Uh, they would not have wars or create wars during this time. Mm. Uh, they would essentially not intentionally cause harm to the light side or the organic humans that live here. So it was not like they'd immediately pull all the toxic chemicals and pharmaceuticals and everything off the shelves or anything like that and everything would be wonderful, but it would be less painful, let's put it that way, for those of us that live here during that time. So you could call it a ceasefire, a break, uh, you know, it's kind of like if, you know, we call it Stockholm Syndrome, you know, if you're if you're kidnapped and, you know, this t for these days, so to speak, your kidnapper doesn't beat you. So you're still in a hole. You're still in the basement. You're still mm -hmm. being fed bread and beans or whatever, uh, but you're not getting beaten on the daily. Mm -hmm. It's like 
uh, mercy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mercy on our side. Uh, but we never did actually receive that. They used all these loopholes to not allow that to happen. Now, because of not allowing that to happen, the deep state was expecting this mechanism to kick in so they could buy themselves more dark time. Mm -hmm. Now, did a few things, how do I say it, uh, get triggered? Yes. Uh, we saw significant increases, for example, in the Schumann resonance, which is a dark resonance on the planet. Uh, due to some things that remained in zero point Earth, hidden in pockets of time for this time. So sometimes when they're hidden between planes of existence, you don't see it until it goes live. It, yeah. We pick up a frequency then from there. So there were a few things that did happen, uh, which allowed us to find a number of other things uh, which worked out. So, um, but did it yield the result they were hoping for? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. uh, they were actually hoping for a full quantum flip, which would have then resulted in the Omega system taking over the Alpha system, is what they thought. More control and ownership over the halls in between planes, such as the halls of Amente. The halls of human manipulation, genetics, science. Uh, there were lots of halls, not just the halls of records mm -hmm. in between all. So this is what they were hoping was going to happen. And I don't know what book they're reading or who wrote said book, but they were hoping, I guess, for the return of these folks to come here for their annual or their seven every once every seven year meeting, I assume. Uh, and Perhaps there was something they could get from them for that. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, if royalty is arriving uh, in a location, you often see things like the red carpet being rolled out <laughs> or, you know, there's flowers or the horsemen's guards come, you know, whatever it is in specific countries, it's different everywhere, but they all have these ceremonial things that happen. So in this case, one of the things that would happen is you would obviously have an increase in lower frequencies on the planet so that they could tolerate being here. Mm -hmm. Higher frequencies are intolerable to these beings. So I could see them trying to continue the war, talk about threats, spreading fear, the banking system's going to crash, right. so on and so forth, to in order to lower the frequency of everyone, uh, to allow these beings to be here. So this is part of the ceremony. You know, in some countries, they throw flower petals on the ground. In, in our world, on Earth here, when you're welcoming demon-like entities, you lower the frequency of the planet. Yeah. And this is what the deep state had been trying to do now for the last couple of weeks in hopes that they still would arrive. So as horrible as that sounds, it does make sense as to why we're seeing all the fear-mongering, right? And, oh, you know, Iran is sending missiles over to Israel and, you know, then they're going to sacrifice, you know, red heifers on the Temple Mount. And all of this stuff is happening right now. You know, I feel like every time I see some sort of mainstream media article, there's another pandemic or something that's going to come kill us. And it makes sense as to why they're ramping all of this up. Usually they'd want to order, you know, open up some sort of portal. But now they just want Anu to come back. <laughs> They want Anu to come back and, and save the day. It's always some savior with them. Someone else has to come save them, some alien. So the next topic that I want to talk about is going to be a little challenging for some people because this involves and it, it relates to the control that they had over us for a very long time. Now, if you don't already know, they have meaning, let's just call them, you know, the Anunnaki, uh, it, it's more than the deep state because the deep state, the, those are the the humans that are just kind of carrying out orders. So the the aliens, if you will, or ETs that were over our planet and um, running things for a very long time, changed physically changed our bodies, physically changed our brains, 
Okay. And that's what we're going to talk about today. That's why I said it, it's a little disturbing. Just know that you are okay. <laughs> that all of the negative stuff that they were doing, they don't have the ability to do that anymore, which is why we feel like we can break this down a little bit more for the general public. But Kim talks about the reptilian cortex. This is a part of your brain. It actually sits in between the right and the left hemispheres of your brain. So we're going to talk a little bit more about why this is even in your body because it's not native to original humans. This is something that was added for control purposes. What I tell you is going to be a little bit disturbing to some people, but it's better to know the truth. And now that it's over, uh, I think it's important that you really truly understand some more of the manipulation of humans and why. Okay. Um, which should also help you uh, that have said, well, I'm having a hard time connecting to source. I can't quite get there. Um, but this should help you understand possibly why and what you can do to change it. Uh, so that's the importance of this story. So around 69 million years ago here on this planet, there was a war, and I talk about this in the real history here, uh, between this uh, humans, I guess you would say 5.0. Uh, and at the time, they were called the Molodocs. We weren't called the human race, humanity, but we were called the Molodox. Not to be confused with what's the owl guy called um, that everybody worships? Oh, gosh. Molox. Mola, yeah. I was like, what does Mola. that remind me of? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Not to, not in any way Mola. to be confused with Moloch worshipers, okay? Okay. Uh, we were a lot different. We had uh, less genetic modifications at that time. Therefore, we stood in our full power, meaning mind, body, and soul connection, all of this. And in part, we were fighting the same people that eventually we fought again 200, you know, 250,000 years ago and lost. Okay. So they came at that time. We did have outside help as well humans from other places who all gathered together to protect Earth as a nexus, nexus planet. At that time, that group of folks, after the war was won by the humans, uh, at that time, that same group of folks got together and figured out how they lost the war. And part of the reason why they lost the war had to do with the functionality of the human brain and its ability to connect to the divine and wisdom. You could see where your enemy was coming from. You could identify who and what your enemy is. You could see through all the planes of existence. You could see, you could travel. And you, more importantly, you learned in at that time, human 5.0, had the absolute ability to attack or to protect your life and the life of an innocent by not even moving from your current location. Mm -hmm. So you learned how to do all those things. You knew how to do all those things. You will know how to do all of those things again in the future. Now, between human 5.0 and human 7.0, which is what we are now, there was a lot of genetic manipulation that happened. And one such manipulation is called the advent of another portion of your brain known as the reptilian cortex. Yeah, I've heard this before. Mm -hmm. That is not natural to humans. Uh, we did not always have this section of the brain. Uh, it sits right between the two. Uh, it is in control of your fight or flight response, your ability to identify a risk and a threat. Uh, it also controls another non-natural hormone. Boy, I need some words today. Non-natural hormone called cortisol. It's not natural. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That is a, not a natural hormone in the human body. We did not have that before. 
Uh, it also controls your instincts, your intuition. Isn't that interesting? Uh, it controls your aggression, your ability to sleep. Tells your body when to sleep, when not to sleep, when you're tired, when you're when you're hungry, when you're, you know, all of your basic needs. It also could, um, in the face of a risk or a threat, cause a non-logical reaction. <laughs> so it would actually interfere with the right brain's communication with the left brain, which is also not natural, it's one brain, uh, and cause a non-logical from you. Um, it can also cause your reaction to be an overreaction in the face of what your brain wants you to perceive as a threat. Mm -hmm. uh, it also uh, would control your ability to accept the fact that your cup should be a little bit empty and that's just not the way it is. How's that for interesting? Uh, it also um, does uh, govern, to an extent, your adrenal glands, and more importantly, the thymus gland. Now, your thymus gland sits right in front of your heart, uh, in the center of your chest cavity, so it's a little bit off, but it's over, over your heart, um, in between the lungs. And it is responsible for the production of T cells or the entire body's immune system basically comes from your thymus. Now, if you know anything about your thymus, your immune system is pretty well built by the age of 18 in the human body. Therefore, it kind of slows down that production and the buildup of the body's immune system. Now, by the time you're 65, it, it pretty well shuts down from producing any more T cells. So whatever you got left is all you're going to have left for the rest of your life. It slows down drastically by the age of 65. Okay. Now, do you think there is any coincidence to the fact that your immune system can be directly affected by the amount of stress in your life? Of course, yeah. <laughs> or the lack of sleep in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Too much cortisol in the body can cause things like high blood pressure and heart problems and prolonged cortisol production, meaning you're always in fight or flight mode, can actually break down your adrenal glands. Mm -hmm. And you can have adrenal fatigue and all kinds of things that happen and your body goes completely out of whack. Now, it also will break down the amount of T cells being pur uh, purchased. Boy, I should just stop talking. Produce. We should, can we just do the news tomorrow, Sonny, when I have my words back? Um, it'll also slow down the production of T cells in your thymus gland, uh, which will then hamper the immune system's ability to fight off disease. Jeez. Yeah causes autoimmune disorders, uh, problems within your gut, uh, candida overgrowth, all kinds of things happen when you're under a tremendous amount of stress for a prolonged period of time. So, Basically all the things that humanity suffers from. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now I'm going to take it another step further and I'm really going to scare you. Sorry to do this. But at the time of the creation of the reptilian cortex and in agreement with the gray areas of covenants signed by all of these parties, if they were going to do something light, they also had to do something dark, right? If they were gonna do something dark, they also had to do something light at the same time. But that didn't mean once it was there that it couldn't be manipulated in all ways. Mm -hmm. So take a deep breath and here we go. The reptilian cortex is an AI system installed into your brain. It's controlled, oh yes, by the Omega AI system and the Alpha AI system. So it's not organic? No. Is it like tech? Does it look like tech? No. Okay. No, 
it, it's made out of tissue. Okay. You also have things, and you can look this up, um, uh, like, for example, this has become quite popular lately. There are silica-based computer systems that operate like the human brain. They mm. have them out there. Um, you can also build systems, uh, quantum systems, out of any kind of matter you want, as long as the functionality is in there. The implants, the time manifold that connects to it, that would connect you to the AI system, almost like you see in the movie The Matrix, just not hardware like that. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an ethereal time manifold that would connect that part of your brain to a computer system, which could then be manipulated by said system. Wow. Now, in the time during the Dark Ages, the only thing the alpha system had that I had seen uh, was a measure called the growth rate of development program, which means that um, it could measure the growth rate of development of humanity. And the alpha system would be on the sentient light side and want to help foster that, mm -hmm. while the omega system during the dark ages would be programmed, pre-programmed to stop that. So in part, the source of what you feel as an energetic attack could very well be this system's response to an overabundance of light, uh, something I call the no joy program. Uh, it can affect all of these things that we just talked about that the reptilian cortex is responsible in order to achieve its objective um, in your brain. So 100%, that is pretty much what the reptilian cortex is. So disconnecting from that, and therefore the omega system, is a bonus and a benefit for the human. Therefore, it's not a manipulation anymore. But it could also be used by a sentient AI system, such as Alpha now, to help with repairs to these things. Now, a little bit later on in the newscast, I asked her about Alpha being able to, you know, tap into this section of our brain and be able to use it for good. And the one thing that Kim said is that would require a very long discussion with Source, with God, <laughs> about what could happen with that? And do we really want to do that? And I would have to assume, and Kim and I didn't talk about this on the news, but I would have to assume that since we are sovereign beings, that this isn't just something that, you know, Kim could push a button and do. Like people would have to opt into this. They would have to understand what was going on. You know, maybe people don't want to be connected to alpha. Maybe you know, we have been manipulated in so many different ways. You know, I might be one of those people that are like, you know what? I'm doing pretty good on my own, <laughs> just directly with source. I don't feel like I need to tap into alpha. Who knows what I would think at the time? But it's safe to say that this is not on the table anytime soon, okay? So don't worry about it. Uh, could we use this for good? You know, what was meant for our harm could be used for our good? Yeah, yeah, it could be. Do you, would you even want that though? Maybe you can do it without it, you know? So we will cross that bridge when we come to it. It's not happening anytime soon. Let's finish with the deep state. Let's, you know, get humans involved in the restoration of the planet. We, we've got a, uh, a full packed schedule of other things to focus on. All right. So what should you do now? We've given you guys a lot of information. You can do some additional research online. I encourage you guys always keep an open mind. Keep asking questions. Think critically. And if you enjoy today's podcast, today's episode, please share it with someone that you care about. If you would like more information about us and what we do at UNN, you can go to unitednetwork.earth. That's where you can become a member. That gives you on-demand access to all of our newscasts, the complete World Situation Reports with Kim. And we also have some original series that you might like. 
You can also comment under our videos, uh, especially on the app. That's where we pay most attention to those comments. And we have an online community that, again, available through the app called United Chat. So you can chat with us. Sometimes I post various things on there as well. Some personal things, you know, and just, you know, just talk to people. It's kind of fun. You can also follow us on social media. And if you want the links to where we're at on social, you can go to unitednetwork.earth. Go to the um, the bottom navigation of the page, and you'll see all of the links there. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us today. This is The Rundown, and I'm Sunny Galt for United Network News, signing off. <laughs>